Charles and his men secured the province of Echizen, blocking one of the main routes that the Japanese needed to use to get reinforcements to the rich and historied Kenai region. The volunteer brigade under Lieutenant Lawrence played a vital part, destroying an army that tried to cut Charles's line of communications. Elsewhere, Jos Arten and Tadakuni Jervis wiped aside more enemies, and the armies on the Yodo defense line spread out to prepare for a fresh offensive. Prime Minister, how quickly the time for my next report has come about. Japan is a pleasant place, though I dare say it, the weather is even more unreliable than at home. I am delighted to say that my audit of the captured territories has been completed, but it is with no delight at all that I relay my findings. General Alcock has invested vast sums of army money into business ventures owned entirely by himself. There is a great deal of coal, silk, and opium being traded to his profit, with no personal investment required on his part. The organization of his network of companies and fronts exceeds that of the army group he commands. There is a man here who goes by the name Jervis, who has swiped command of thousands of men without an eyelid so much as twitching. I fear that he is not of any alliance common to us. I fear, although it may sound silly, that he is a leftover from Mr. Smith Stanley's experiment. I say no more, but if you are privy to what I mean by this, I shall be glad to have given my warning. I shall await your order on what to do about the General. Welcome back to Honourable Gentlemen. We're going to go right into a battle, because right here I spotted a potentially interesting scenario. You can see the enemy have formed up a large army across this river from John Alcock. I'm just standing here because I don't really need to advance, I'm on the defensive, but I thought we can simulate a defence by just attacking them, drawing them into the fight, and then trying to force them to cross the river so that we can fight this big enemy army one unit at a time pretty much and overcome that dangerous looking balance bar. I start things off by securing the only river crossing very quickly and then setting up stakes along it ready to defend it. I've also got my semicircle of men just on my side of the river trying to keep away from the precise bank since the enemy will be able to shoot across the river. We want the enemy to engage us after they've crossed and come up the hill only then getting line of sight when it's too late. Now all I needed to do was fire my artillery at the enemy across the river and the theory was this would rile them up and cause them to charge across the river trying to take out the artillery which is what usually happens when you outrange the AI but in this case it simply didn't work. I was firing at them and they were content to just be in formation and take the casualties which was probably the right call because they'll lose fewer men to my artillery barrage than they will to charging across a dangerous river. I eventually decided to try a second tactic. I sent my dragoons across the river onto their side, right onto the flank of the enemy's army, where I could just start shooting at them to see if they would react in any way to this. I had a bit of an issue, as you can see, the range of the dragoons is a bit lower than advertised. Or well, actually, I think it might be in this case that in order to technically have line of sight onto an enemy unit, you have to be able to see the middle of it or something like that. So being able to see some of the unit doesn't cause the men to start firing. Eventually, though, we get things going. So I'm just going to shoot down the flank of the enemy army, killing as many enemies as I can and see if they react. Doing something like this will occasionally cause the entire enemy army to lose its defensive mindset, which might make them cross the river in this case. What it did at first was nothing. I destroyed the first unit of samurai on the end of their line, then took out some Tetsubo ninjas, and still the enemy just weren't reacting to this attack at all. Next, there was a unit of actual gunners, so this time a bit more dangerous because they could shoot back. And indeed, after killing some of them, that unit 
goes out of my range and turns to face me, so they're going to try and fight. I'm just going to get out of the way and see what happens once we're out of the range of that unit. I thought maybe that would cause their army to go into offensive mode. They started moving, but all they're doing is reforming because they want to be standing back where I killed all those enemies before, so they put more units on top of them. Then I just went around behind their army and shot them again. This time around, they didn't really care about firing back, maybe because I'm behind them, they just can't think of turning around to shoot. It's only because they could sort of see me last time. Not really sure how the AI scripting works. Anyway, we shoot loads of enemy units, and after a while we start to see some action from the enemy's army. They're actually advancing gradually towards the river crossing, so I thought maybe this is working. And in fact, they took some cavalry and just raced them forward towards the crossing, so that was a very good sign. Those cav will just find all of the stakes that I'd left around the river, so they just died without achieving anything. But I thought maybe this means the enemy are going to put their whole army through the river crossing since they sent one unit ahead. As it happens though, they weren't. They advanced up a bit and then stopped. So I had to go back to shooting onto the flank of their line. These dragoons picking up hundreds of kills and weakening the enemy quite a bit. It's going quite well. And then I tried another tactic to annoy the enemy. I moved up some riflemen, my long ranged light infantry, to just shoot right into the front of their army in general. And this finally caused the enemy to get mad. I immediately realized these riflemen were in trouble because the enemy cavalry charged them and there's no way they can make it back to my line on time. So indeed, those riflemen are essentially sacrificed with my artillery firing into them Damn, to try and take out the cavalry. Counts. But we run, have sir. achieved our objective. The loss of that unit is an ample trade. Now the entire enemy army will rush through that tiny choke point with all of our guns trained on it, and that should go entirely as planned. We can let the Dragoons rest. Now that the enemy are here at the crossing, they won't go back. According to Charles, anyway. He told me there's a sense of relief that they feel to be able to die together. So once a day comes, which they have resolved to be their last, you can begin a sort of chain reaction where all eagerly scramble forwards to get their body closest to the enemy. A foul disposition, you may say, but you can see the sport in it, can't you? They have these warriors' codes, all these rules and obligations. Quite sophisticated, I am led to believe. That is why they fight so fiercely but also why they can't employ strategy as you or I might understand it. Death is important to the soldiers, but not so useful for their cause. A rare kind of war this is. Hardly war at all, really. All the units that attacked the river crossing were easily destroyed, but the enemy had a third army that wasn't on the field at first, and it went back into defensive mode, now forming up on the other side of the river from us. And as you can see in the top right, we're running out of time. We're actually nearly in the position where we'll lose the battle by default because we didn't do it within an hour. So I had to move across the river and go to attack the enemy as quickly as possible to avoid that technical loss. So now we've got a standard line battle going. The issue we have is that the enemy line is much wider than ours. So while our center will be fine due to our high quality, on the edges things are a bit dangerous because our flanking units will be a bit overwhelmed. I used my revolver mercenaries to try and hold on the right by sitting on top of this little mound where the enemy would have to get quite close to me, allowing me to use my short range. But they were taking pretty heavy losses and getting lots of enemy attention. That unit on the end of the line having the same experience where most of them were killed just due to overwhelming enemy fire. However, the rest of the battle was unremarkable. We just shot the enemy down with our far superior infantry and then things were fine because stuff started routing, the enemy's morale is getting low. The only challenge is still the time limit. More enemy units are gradually feeding into the battle but we've only got a minute or two left to actually win this thing so hopefully the enemy will get on with it and indeed by using my dragoons to outflank enemy units and shoot them it got to the point where they were just routing instantly so we routed most of the stuff at the back and a couple more units came in to fight with our entire army on their own. That didn't go very well so they routed as well and we did get the win with some time to spare. Perfect, a decisive victory that went a lot less well than I thought it might or I hoped it might. 
so well done to the enemy for avoiding a complete disaster. It was only a 10 to 1 ratio in the end. I had thought it might actually be a bit better than that, and most of our losses were taken in that final short battle at the end there. If that had been avoided, we probably would have got that battle virtually free. Now, there was no point in fighting that battle. We've secured a bridge that we already had secure. There's nowhere really I want to go on the other side, so I'm just going to go right back and continue my defensive strategy while the army rebuilds. I really just did that for fun to see if we could trick the AI, and we sort of could. After that, there was another one of these battles. Some of the troops supporting Jervis are being attacked in a castle over on Shikoku. Just loads of line infantry coming to hit them. This is very similar to battles we've seen before, so here are the highlights. First, we blew up the enemy as they attacked on the western portion of the castle. Not especially effective, but always nice to shoot while the enemy are near the walls, because the weird physics glitches that uh, occur when the walls collapse can kill loads of men. You can see it happening here with our second volley hitting the enemy's tightly packed group of reinforcements, inflicting loads of damage, some very juicy artillery fire there. The enemy probably aren't feeling too good about this battle at this point, but they're still going to go for it. Now they did sort of get a breakthrough over here on the west, they defeated some of the units I had defending just below our inner walls. However, that attack didn't go anywhere because the enemy were themselves so weak after making it that they couldn't get past our next layer of defence, so they were wiped out, and that reinforcement army also got itself wiped out trying to attack through the same position all at once and just being shot to pieces by our men up on the wall. And we even get the glitch that happens sometimes, I'm not sure what causes it, it seems like if a unit becomes sufficiently broken up while climbing over walls and being fired at, it can just freeze and then get shot even more, taking extreme casualties. Anyway, we won the battle, suffice to say, a nice heroic victory with a lovely ratio as well. We did lose one unit, but it was a garrison unit, so it will just come back for free, and ultimately those enemy armies were just deleted for no losses. Now after that, there was another fight, another pretty easy looking one. The Yodo decided to send loads of monks and ninja to try and make that river crossing, defended by John. No idea what they're thinking, this probably won't go very well for them. I fear I might have arrived at a bad time. No, don't worry about all that. Just the standard thing. Didn't you get any of this? They let us cross the river unharmed. We've captured a castle on the other side, too. We're ready to go, so what's next? We could move on, but I am reliably informed that the fighting will never end. Not until we've got the last inch of land under our boots. Oh, well, that won't take long, sir. I disagree. Some of the troops are due to be discharged, and London's sniffing here now, wondering what's going on. There is much to be jeopardized by losing more British lives here, no matter how efficiently those lives can be given. I'll take full responsibility for any and all losses, General. Allow me to pursue the enemy to the south. I'll leave the river well guarded. South? More tea, is it? You know about that, sir. I know that the Hook and Broadhurst tea concern can't keep up with orders. Well done, Colonel. Thank you, sir. However, the fact remains that if London wants, they can take that away from you. We are both rather interested in private business arrangements remaining private. Thus, discretion is now key. We can't just stop fighting the war, surely. No, but there may be a way to conclude matters much more rapidly than via the direct method. For that, I'll need to chat to your friend, Mr. Arton. Annoyingly, while that battle was going very well, the game actually crashed towards the end, so I had to just auto-resolve the result, and I got pretty lucky with that auto-resolve. I had a load of units that were nearly dead, which I thought would be killed in the auto-resolve, but they weren't, it just went that well, so that was nice. Then Charles had to take out three enemy armies, you can see the corpses of the other two on the left there, who were harassing his front line, and that was all fine, so now we've got everything cleared up here, and we're going to go on the offensive across the river since the enemy aren't guarding their territories nearby. 
I'm considering an offensive into this blob of enemies, but there's just no particular reason to do it. We don't have enough armies that it would be trivial to do so, but I also don't think it would be particularly hard to take them down, so I don't necessarily want to. There's nothing strategic to gain by capturing that area. So for now, I thought I'll just sit around and do nothing and see if they split up and make things easier for us. Then I spotted this opportunity that I just couldn't resist. I've got a spare stack that I can send down here to take this Yodo castle. It was undefended, just one turn's march away, so I thought, well, we might as well. We'll capture it easily. And from here, we can even capture the place over to the west, that port. And to the south of this castle and the one to the west is a mountain range that's impassable. So this is a nice little corner, actually, that we can hole up in. Now, for my strategy with Joss, I was going to have him secure Goto and then come over here to Tsushima to complete the securing of all of the major islands around Kyushu, but I've decided to do an alternative plan with him now that we'll see much later on. So I'm going to do this British style. I thought we'll secure Tsushima using only ships, which we can do theoretically. All we have to do is blockade their port and make sure they don't have any ships at large, and all of those armies there will then be effectively taken out of the war because they just can't leave the island. I did it wrong there, I need to split my fleet up so I can bombard the port and occupy it on the same turn to get rid of their shipbuilding capability, but I'll do that eventually and Tsushima will then be ignored from now on. Jervis takes out the survivors from the battle with these guys, I was calling them the Yamanuchi previously, I realised it's actually the Yamauchi, there's no N in the middle, but whatever, the red guys. There can be only one red faction here on Shikoku and Jervis is going to make sure of it. They die and we're now going to push towards the east where there's an unguarded castle. I will need to leave armies behind because we can still be attacked from the north and the west in this area, so we can't just leave these castles on their own. Luckily, with my infinite money, creating a small army to guard each one isn't going to be a problem. Now, an enemy geisha causes one of my foreign agents, my foreign veterans, to defect. That was pretty cheeky, and right after, the enemy come to attack this castle on Goto. It's the standard sort of castle assault force. Nothing to worry about. I'm more annoyed about the loss of that agent overall. Excuse me, is this seat taken? No, be my guest. Wow, look at you. What's wrong? Nothing at all. <laughs> Never seen that traditional Japanese stuff up close. Let me guess, you're one of those geisha girls. Close. Close? How close? I am not one of the street girls to which you refer. Yeah, must admit I've never met a Japanese girl who speaks English like the Queen. One must pursue a higher education in this modern world. Do you not agree? I agree entirely, ma'am. So... If you're not a street girl, why are you coming in here all beautiful, asking to sit next to an old soldier? Because you looked lonely. <laughs> you got that right. I am a professional, after all. Professional? What's that meant to mean? You're a handsome man. I bet you've been with plenty of lovers. But I doubt you've been with a professional. Professional lover? <laughs> you don't even know what you're missing, war hero. Why don't you come back to my house in the country? There won't be a battle here any time soon, right? Oh, I shouldn't think so. Yeah, I'd be honored to escort you. Come truce, at your service. You had better be. It was a simple enough victory that just went in the standard fashion overall, and that's doomed the Fukui on that island since they now have very little left and Joss will be able to finish them off. Now we've got a battle with the Kuwana. You can see I was trying to besiege Yamashiro here using a reinforcement army and Dorian's army, but they're too far away from each other and the enemy sallied against the smaller group, giving themselves a nice advantage. I could retreat and just attack with the bigger army in the future, but I thought let's try this, let's just see what happens. We're going to make a nice basic formation, a line of infantry with two echelons on each end, both of them protected by stakes, since the enemy have quite a few cavalry units, and indeed, right as the battle starts, they send their cavalry in to make flanking attacks, going right into the stakes, so that was very obliging of them. They're actually not going for my echelon, they're going for the unit on the end of the main line. I just about formed a square here to receive the enemy, and the stakes weakened them as well, so their charge didn't do too much damage. 
In the center we've got some line battling, but the enemy's melee infantry are charging forwards, which hopefully will be blocking the line of sight of some of their gunners and making them less effective. On my right flank, another cavalry attack came in, just like on the left, again going through stakes and impacting with men formed up in squares, so they're very much weakened as they come in, but still they're good melee units, which will mean that ensuing fight won't be all that good for us. They also managed to get a few melee units into the front of our line, many of them beaten up, but just a few men can do some damage. Luckily, our men are being pretty good about shooting them at point-blank range, so we're going to be able to clear out much of the melee attacks. On the left side, we repulsed an attack from some Naginata Levy, and eventually repulsed their cavalry as well, with the squares doing the job efficiently. Now those men can rejoin the main line and continue the fight. On the right side, it wasn't so good. One of our squares collapsed and went back into a general formation. And the enemy had moved up lots of infantry to be very close to us, so many of my men were distracted taking part in that fight. While things aren't going that badly, and we probably would win eventually there, it gets mixed up when the enemy general smashes through our line and causes some morale issues. Now they're looking like they're going to break through in that area. At least along the rest of the line, we've won our line battle and repulsed the melee attacks, so those units will soon be freed up to help. Their ninjas and cavalry managed to smash apart our formation, breaking units and killing many of our soldiers, leaving our right looking a little bit undermanned. We've got this one unit on the end of the line that's still fighting, plus our supporting echelon still in square formation is shooting to support these guys as well. They get another cavalry charge thrown at them, but it's only a few men, so it doesn't do that much damage. And the fight they're trying to take part in to their front with these volunteers will be won eventually just because of the enemy's inferior quality. We dealt with their remaining melee units by doing the old run away and then shoot just behind their own men tactic which got rid of the ninjas. The enemy cavalry by now had lost all their men after grinding through several of my units. And the remaining fight, as I said, isn't that difficult so we won with a bit of skill shooting. In the end, a heroic victory. Not too bad. I thought we'd lose at least one unit there, but we got away with it, just some of our men have almost no one in their unit. But since the unit isn't gone, everyone will come back due to the magic of replenishment and will be fine in the end. Now over on Goto, I sent a small force to besiege the final castle, just to stop the enemy from building more units, because it was going to take two turns for Joss to get over here. I tried to attack that unit, that army there, to get them out of the way, but they just moved to a position that will still reinforce the castle for that no help. They could counterattack and attack my smaller group in the end turn sequence, but they don't have that much left alive, and that harassment from the navy means they have even less now, so no real worries there. Over on Tsushima, I'm now going to correctly implement the blockade of their port, blowing up the guns using other ships, then sending a ship in to occupy the port. That stops them building ships, I believe, and they can't repair it while I'm occupying it, I think, anyway. So they're now permanently out of the game as long as we leave that ship there. With the Kiwana, they just had like one guy left alive inside the castle, so we had to sort that out with a quick order resolve. And there we go, that's Yamashiro taken, we've re-secured this area. And I'll now send him to the east side of the lake to help Lawrence defend the main road over there. Here's that attack I mentioned earlier, taking Sakai port with George Hook and his support army. So that secures us this little corner. It's still got a couple of enemy armies in it, so it's not necessarily secure, but hopefully it will take them down soon enough. And we get a new officer, one Mr. Granger, who's a traditionalist. Not sure what that means for the British Army's perspective, but it gives him the bonuses of a traditionalist samurai officer, which may or may not come in useful. Probably not, since we don't have the units for it. Now Jervis continues on his warpath, the enemy retreat before him and seem to think that hiding inside this castle is going to help them. They are wrong in this case and he quickly kills them all and occupies the castle. This place I think is actually the capital of this enemy faction, so that's handy. A bit of scouting reveals more enemy armies and castles of course over to the east and we can just go after them right now. I was able to move up some support troops to take care of public order here in Tosa so the main force can move on. And we're actually almost at the level of tech where we can occupy a castle and then just leave it immediately and it won't rebel even if it has 0% British support just because the prospect of the British Empire is now so appealing to people so that's quite handy. 
Finally, we get attacked here at the river crossing that John is defending, just a couple of regular looking armies, so the sort of thing where we'll just be slaughtering the enemy mercilessly, so perhaps we'll use that as the warm up in the next part. Thank you for watching this episode and a special thanks to all of the officially Devon patrons. We'll be starting a mission to go deep behind enemy lines to fight enemies old and new in the next episode of Honourable Gentlemen.